I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Breguet Classique Moon Phase. 36 millimeters in 18 karat yellow gold. You can see, and if you like, you can buy this reference 3130BA on our website, watchyouwant.com. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now you can see on my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This is the ideal dress watch. It is the quintessential modern Breguet classique and dress reference. It's one of the longest running and most successful designs in the Breguet catalog. Today it's known as the 3137, but the 3130 that you see here, designed by no less than Daniel Roth when he was the director of watchmaking and design at Breguet during the 1980s, has not only proven its mettle as one of the true timeless classics in the post-AL Breguet catalog, that is the watches built since Abraham Louis Breguet's death, you have to admit, Almost 30 years is one heck of a run that only the Type 22 can really compare to. But not just that, the watch also represents an outstanding combination of aesthetics on the outside and real substance on the inside. Only 7.5 millimeters thick again and 36 millimeters across, it's easy to wear on any wrist. It will slip under any dress cuff. The watch wears light, wears light and easy and effortless in the fashion of the greatest dress watch designs. It doesn't need square feet, yards, it doesn't need volume, it doesn't need to be, quote, bold or oversized to make a powerful statement. And that statement is largely inspired by the Breguet Pocket Watch Number no. 5, a minute repeater with power reserve display that Abraham Louis Breguet himself built in the tail end of the 18th century. If you look it up on Google, you'll see this really is an outstanding translation of the pocket watch aesthetic to a wristwatch format. And that was a big part of what Daniel Roth, before he founded his own manufacturer, brought to the Breguet tradition. That was back when they were owned by the Chaumet brothers. Now you can see that it is truly ultra thin in profile and that the lugs are retained by very high quality screwed in fixtures, not spring bars. So no costs are cut. In spite of the thinness and fineness of these lugs, they're built robustly, soldered to the case. And again, the strap, at both ends, secured by, by uh, I should say, screwed-in retainers, not spring bars. A beautiful, if relatively spare and understated, 18-karat yellow gold pin buckle accompanies the watch. And I have to emphasize that because this is a purely traditional design, the focus is entirely on the dial. The case, cold rolled and coined on its side, is beautifully finished by hand. This is an expensive way to make a case, and likewise, the sapphire cabochon is a highlight. But moving inboard, you see exactly what Abraham Louis Breguet contributes to the watches bearing his name in the modern era. The essential design language, from the stylized Roman numerals to the contrast of Clou de Paris Guilloche and the circular brushed metallic hour track. You can see the dimples outboard of the hour track representing the minute marks and the seconds track. You can see the inset off-centered complications beautifully cut, each with a different texture, a different depth, adding a lot of character to the dial while imparting just enough, I would say, vintage ambiance to give this watch a concrete link to its ancestry, to its design heritage. Very clear though, you can see the date at 6 o'clock, the power reserve, an impressive 50 hours between 10 and 11, and a moon phase. Now this is the 59 tooth variety of the moon phase, so every roughly two and three quarter years you have to reset it. But again, with a watch like this, the more interaction you can have with the mechanism, with the quality of the watch making the case, the dial, the complications, the better. Likewise, you can see the classical Breguet hands. You can see them with their subtle curvature. They do have a little bit of a, a wasp-waisted curve as they approach the cannon pinion, pinching inboard, heat blued. They have a beautiful cobalt tone to them. And you can see the apertures outboard. These are the rare hands that have plenty of span. They don't seem to fall short. There are a lot of watches designed today that seem to have hour and minute hands that don't quite extend to the indices to which they refer. Not only is it aesthetically unpleasant, but it's functionally a bit of an I would say impediment to use. So this watch has neither problem and elegance to burn. You can see the beautiful reflective stars and moon disc within the moon phase. Now the watch has a lot of the other classical elements of Breguet, namely fine watchmaking. Unfortunately, because this model is an early example, you can't see the display case back because there isn't one. This was back in the day when you took it for granted that the watchmaker had the integrity 
to build an outstanding movement up to the caliber of the dial and the case. Very traditional in that sense. Breguet uses its caliber 502 based on the Frédéric Breguet P71. Now this is a 35 joule, 2.4 millimeter thick, ultra thin automatic movement. And I want to emphasize that, ultra thin. This was one of the movements that came out in the late 60s to rival the great JLC caliber 920, the movement that ultimately went on to power, the Patek Philippe Nautilus, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, and of course a whole generation of Vacheron Constantin dress watches as well as the 222 sports watch. The Piguet P71 was in that league of ultra-thin automatic winding haute horlogerie movements designed to turn complications within traditional dress watches and even more modern sporting references. Now the distinction between the JLC and the Piguet is that the Piguet had a far longer power reserve, 48 to 50 hours as opposed to 38 to 40, and the Piguet operated at a different beat rate. Instead of the JLC's 19,800, the Piguet operates at 18,000. It's a steady, almost pocket watch-like tick, and when you hold this watch up to your ear, you can really distinguish each individual beat of that stately movement. It's also worth mentioning that it had a large off-centered rotor, not quite a micro rotor, and not the cantilevered rotor system, the annular rotating ring that JLC used. This one is a little bit quirky in that the rotor doesn't take up the entire plate of the movement, rather it's circular and off-centered, almost halfway between a traditional center rotor and a micro rotor. A very distinctive movement. It's been used by many high horology brands over the years. Everyone from Breguet to Blancpain to I've seen it used in IWC skeletal dress references and quorums. It's one of the true greats of ultra-thin high horology, and to get it in a watch with timeless looks like this and useful complications, as well as, frankly, the most romantic of complications, the moon phase, it's an outstanding, compelling package for the watch enthusiast who couldn't care less about oversized sports watches. If you are a traditionalist, if you love independent horology and you dig the connection to Daniel Roth, if you love the classic imagery of Abraham Louis Breguet's pocket watches, if you love what the Swatch Group has done resurrecting the prestige of the Breguet name in the present day, or if you just want an outstanding watch that's a tremendous value, having originally retailed for over $31,000 as late as 2008, this Breguet Classic Moon Phase with power reserve date and automatic winding is an ideal choice for you. You can see it and you can take it home on our website, watchyouwant.com.